Hey friends and family, this is SP with another news nugget. And this evening, our story is coming out of Florida, Fort Lauderdale, where our eight-year-old girl was beaten brutally bad um, from a foster foster parents. Okay, you guys, we're going to talk about this just a little bit, but I need you to subscribe to the channel, become part of the family, hit that notification bell so you'll know every time when we have an upload. You know, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give me a thumbs down. But always leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me um, if is there any information that you have that I don't have about any of these cases. Because we are a part of family and we're going to talk about this. So you guys, let me drop that nugget for you. Here we go. Okay, friends and family. Now, this story, like I said, it comes out of Florida, Fort Lauderdale. This happened back in May, May the 16th, 2019, where this eight-year-old girl got beat all the time. She was beaten for it. Guess what? having a bad report or having a bad grade or not did her homework. And I mean, she didn't get beat like just a whooping. I mean, you guys know what a whooping is, you know? I mean, she got beat. So let's talk about the three people that was arrested. First of all, we're going to talk about the mother. Her name is Torella Foreman. Now, okay, now you guys, the reason why we're talking about Torella Foreman first, because she was the one that did most of the brutal beating of this young lady of eight years old. She would take a, she would tell the girl to go take a cloth and put it in her mouth, and she be, she would beat her. This girl got beat with jump ropes, cell phone uh, charger cords, belts, you name it. But they would actually put a cloth pin, you know, that you hang your clothes up with, on her lip. Also, I mean. It was crazy. But the examiner said she was beaten so bad that on the top of her thighs, you couldn't, there, there was not a spot that you, that was not covered with scars. It was just uncountable. You guys, they would, like I said, they would put a rag in her mouth while they beat her so that, you know, the neighbors wouldn't hear her scream or holler or cry out. I mean, this is like torture, you guys. This is this was like torture. Well, um, okay, and then here's the dad, the, the 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 foster dad. Now, this older gentleman's name is Dwayne Fletcher. He's 56 years of age. He was there when the police had arrived to the apartment, and I did say apartment. They didn't even live in a house. They lived in an apartment. And when they was questioning the girl, she denied all the allegations. And, and, and he was kind of taunting her like, you know, this didn't happen. You know, you lied, such and such. But when they removed him from the situation, from the little girl, the eight-year-old, she went to telling it all. She was so upset with him because she didn't understand why he did not stop it or protect her. Okay? Now... Now we're going to be talking about Rashad Foreman. Now this is Torella, the, the 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 mother's son. He's 27 years of age, still staying at home with mom in an apartment. A grown man still staying at home with mom in the apartment. 27 years of age, you guys. Well, he was. Uh, she has said that he would beat her with a belt and uh. I mean, he would just be a whooping on her. She said it was just cruciating. But um, he didn't deny that he whooped the child with the belt. He just denied he just didn't use the belt buckle. Like, that was a consolation prize. I mean, I mean, you know, I understand what a whooping is, whether it's a belt, a switch, you know. We used to get beat. I mean, I wouldn't say beat. I would say we would get a whooping when we was younger. I didn't get too many because I, I learned from the, from my older brothers. I told you guys, I, I have a lot of brothers and they did everything and they would get a whooping, but I understand what a whooping is. I don't understand what a beating or beat down is, you know? You don't do that to kids. But anyway, you guys, this whole entire family just 
got this little girl supposed to be for, you know, to nurture her because she already didn't have a place to go. That's why she was already placed with them. And then they totally just, um, just abused this girl, probably because she wasn't part of their bloodline or what. I don't, I don't get it. But, um, you guys, this is, um, sometimes when people do foster parenting and have foster homes, it's a job for them. And you have to understand it is work. It is hard. It's, it's a lot of work, but some people don't do it because they love kids. Some people do it because, you know, they get benefits. They get that check. They get the stamps, you know, they get a write off at the end of the year and, Yes, and uh, so sometimes when you see these parents with a whole bunch of kids, it's more likely they're doing it for the chick and not for the love. But some some of them do have love. Now, what I don't understand about this case right here is back in 2015, I do believe it was, that this lady, she was doing foster care then, and the kids was taken out the home. So if she lost her license to foster care back then for the same allegations here, abuse, abusing the kids, neglect, um, whatever have you, why in the heck in 2012 they give this little girl to them? So this little girl, 2012, it is now 2019. They done had this little girl for a matter of seven years and she's eight so they must have had her when she was one so this this little girl has been going through a lot of mess for seven years and all she probably knows is a whooping a beating a slap a knockdown with belts and chains and jump ropes and cell phones and belt buckles and clothes hanging i mean she, they would just literally tell her go get the rag and she knew she was gonna get it you know you guys, we're going to have to do better. But I've got a clip of the news so you guys can see it for yourself. I'm going to always try to come with some kind of receipt. I'm, I'm going to try. But you guys, I'm just going to let it. I'm going to just let this set. Here we go because I'm babbling. Made in a just a horrific case of child abuse. Yeah, police telling us one of the people arrested was the young victim's foster parent. Local tenants Ian Margo live in Fort Lauderdale with the disturbing details on this. Ian. And one of the others was her foster brother. So people who were in a position of trust for this young child. And the worst part about this is there were signs in the past, signs that this abuse was happening and yet this child was kept in that foster home anyway. I don't know, that's crazy. People living in this Fort Lauderdale apartment building are stunned, learning their neighbors living upstairs had been arrested for abusing a foster child. The victim, who was an eight-year-old, was um, brutally beaten by several individuals. In court, the foster mother, Terella Foreman, her son, Rashad Foreman, and his father, Dwayne Fletcher, all faced felony charges. According to an arrest affidavit, Terella acted as the child's foster mother since 2015, and Rashad, her son, helped care for the kid's well-being. But just days ago, Rashad allegedly, quote, beat the child with a jump rope, and Terella beat the child with a charging cord for getting a bad note home from school. The victim described the abuse to police, saying they were forced to hold two books in each hand and keep their arms out straight as Terella used a charging cord as a whip, and the child said they were told to get a rag because, quote, I'm supposed to put it in my mouth so nobody can hear me. And the biggest concern, this likely isn't the first time this has happened. The affidavit says concerns of child abuse involving Torella date back to 2015, when five other children were removed from the home. The foster child was removed as well, but was inexplicably returned to Torella's home just a year later. And just to give you an idea of how bad this abuse was, there was a part of that affidavit that said when there was a medical exam done, that child's upper thighs, there wasn't a single spot that wasn't covered by either a scar or a fresh cut from this abuse. I did reach out to the Broward Sheriff's Office today, their Child Protective Investigation section. They just got back to me. They said that all cases are confidential. They can confirm an investigation is active and ongoing. The question remains, though, why those people were allowed to be foster parents and foster family after all of those allegations as soon as we get an answer to that. 
We'll let you know.